Welcome to the Lights On Show. I'm your host, Jacob Morissette, and this is a podcast about self-development. In this week's episode, I talk about following motivation and helping others to control their new selves. If you enjoy this podcast and it brings some value to your life, please be sure to follow us on Twitter at Lights underscore show. Hope you enjoy this week's episode. One of the largest problems that I definitely notice with the way that our society works around right now is this idea of a new year equals new stuff, right? We see in all of our cars and our technology products that are being released on a yearly basis, such as the new Toyota Corolla that's being released in 2019 or the 2019 MacBook Pro or just all these products and all these things that we use in our day-to-day lives all come out on a yearly basis. It requires one year and all of us, the consumers, understand that With each year, something different is going to have to change with that product or whatever it is. And what I see wrong with that is that we apply that to not only our products and the expectations that we have for them, but for ourselves. We let the new, we let insignificant things control who we are in a sense. Hear me out for a second. So, what I mean by that is New Year's resolutions. We always say, oh, new year, new me, right? Or this year is going to be a little different. Or high five for 2019 so I don't don't make any stupid mistakes. Or all that type of bull crap in a sense we feed ourselves. And that's exactly what it is. It's just bull crap. I think that we shouldn't allow the new year to enable a new us. I think a perfect example is the amount of people that make New Year's resolutions. Now, I have nothing against New Year's resolutions. I think New Year's resolutions help to bring a sense of, I guess, ownership over who we are as people, what we're going to do, and how we want to continue to live our lives. But there's a bigger picture than just that. There's the bigger picture of, we title it a New Year's resolution. I think of it as, why can't we just title it a resolution? And why do we have to almost set ourselves up to fail and set our own limits at the title of a new year? I know a lot in the, I would probably say most middle class Americans or just the the typical average Joe will get caught up in something I previously mentioned in in an episode about us wanting to almost fit in and all be average and everything. So we have all these average people and... Being that most of society's averageness is considered to be a 9-to-5 job or whatever, now we have people that with the 9-to-5 job, they are getting overstressed and with being overstressed and having a lot to do, they tend to get out of shape. And where this connects to my story is being out of shape, everyone wants to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to get back in shape, it's going to be great, I'm going to start working out, it'll be fine. But what they do is they give themselves handicaps. They purposely tell themselves, oh, I'll I'll do it later. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. I'll I'll do it for a New Year's resolution. And I'll get to that later, but basically what they do is they go out the day after New Year's and they go out and buy a membership for a gym. And they go for about the first week. We all have done this. We all have heard about it. If we haven't done it, but of people going out and getting gym memberships or just going out for a run, telling themselves, I'm going to go out for a run, I'm going to start doing push-ups, I'm going to start losing weight, and then we stop because we've already gotten so dug into this idea of, I'll just keep pushing stuff back, I'll just keep pushing stuff back, it'll be fine, I'll have the New Year's resolution to do it. I don't doubt that there are most definitely people who made a New Year's resolution for 2019 for running or going to the gym, and they even bought a membership, they bought new shoes, and they did all these things to make themselves think that they are ready. And by now, as of the date of this recording, I think it's February 16th, and probably most of them have quit or given up or lost hope in it and stopped or they just neglected their their resolution or any of these types of things. And then 
I'd probably say in about another month or two months or even in June, half of the year, they're probably like, ah, man, why didn't I do that New Year's resolution? Oh, I guess I'll wait till 2020. And the cycle repeats until we die. And not to get all sad and depressing about that, but frankly, I kind of find that's the case. Is we allow ourselves to give ourselves excuses and to take those excuses like gold. So one of the excuses is most definitely to put it off to a news resolution till a date, which is relatively kind of a, a not a real, I mean, it's a real thing, but it's not a physical object. And it's just something that we, we as a society has made up and, then we use that in the excuse, and I kind of, I kind of see that as a little bit ridiculous. But also, we have the physical limitations that we put ourselves. Uh, I, I mentioned about people buying a gym membership or buying a pair of shoes to go running, and that's another thing that we do a lot as a society is we tell ourselves, "Ah, oh, man, I really want to start running, or I really want to start doing this thing, or do this, blah blah blah," and we tell ourselves, oh, "I don't have that, so I can't do it," or. I'll save up for a couple weeks and then I'll go get the pair of shoes and I'll start running. And that's just another hindrance we give ourselves. And again, I kind of find that a little silly. Because you don't need the running shoes to go running. If you really don't have any shoes at all, you can go running barefoot. Like seriously, you can run barefoot. I'm not trying to tell people that we all have to bum it or... We all have to purposely work with materials that aren't going to work very well. But it gets to a point where we have to understand certain things and the things we want to have to get done. I think a perfect example is with this podcast. I obviously didn't start out with the equipment I have now. I, I did exactly what I'm telling you guys to do right now. I used something I already had. And I worked. I went with it. I took my phone. I used the voice memo app on my iPhone, and I started recording. And granted, you guys are not able to hear those. Not that I'm embarrassed about the quality of it, but more like the content. Um, but nonetheless, I event. I actually did make a couple episodes on my phone. And recorded and edited them and did all this stuff with them. But the reason why you guys aren't listening to them is because they sucked and they were just a mistake. And yeah, I learned a lot about that, which obviously I talked about in the previous episode. But I did learn a lot about them. And even when I did buy my first bit of equipment, it was almost like a two-in-one deal. It was an audio recorder and it had a microphone attached to it. So I bought one item for two purposes. Whereas right now, after having the podcast started and getting really invested in it and needing a more high quality equipment, now I've bought a mic and an XLR cable and a mic stand. But I understood from the beginning that I was not going to let the fact that I didn't have an audio recorder at the very beginning or a microphone or a mic stand stop me from at least trying and or slash learning about how to do this podcasting and how to create ideas and how to script stuff and how to write my write, put my ideas in my mouth and put it out to you guys. And it's the same thing for everything else we, we do. We have to understand that certain things shouldn't stop us from achieving our goals or at least physical things or at least things that we want to put on ourselves. So this kind of goes into the point I want to hit is with motivation. So throughout the year, obviously, maybe we're looking through a magazine and let's say we're, I think a perfect example, the the middle-aged working class um, worker who works nine to five and they're a little overweight and because of all their stress and everything and they're kind of like an average Joe, right? And let's say that they're looking at an ad. It could be a dude or a chick. And let's say they're looking at an ad on a magazine and they see a really fit person. And they say, man, that must be nice to look like that. And they get this sudden burst of motivation and 
they actually kind of hype themselves up and everything. But then after all that motivation, all that, after all that dopamine has recited from their brain, they think about their excitement and they go, ah, it's a stupid idea anyways. I don't have this or I don't have that. Or, or they tell themselves, man, that would be really awesome if I could do that. Just not right now. Maybe I just I just can't do it right now. I'm a little too busy. I'm a little bit too whatever. So they just say, oh, I know a perfect time. I'll just do it for my New Year's resolution. And then, like I previously said, it's full cycle all over again. So, some strategies to help with that, because obviously I'm not going to tell you guys or tell anyone they're doing anything wrong without trying to at least offer a solution that possibly could help. But to uh, to allow the motivation that you have to not die out, or at least when it does die out, continue to help hype you up and not allow you to put it off for some stupid reason is firstly, write it down. If you really are excited or really ambitious about something that you want to do, write it down and at least put a physical thing in this world on something that you can look at. I I talked about this on a previous episode, but I kind of want to recap it again uh, here because it's, it's still a great principle, but I wanted to do this podcast, so I, first off, I I talked to a buddy about it, and I didn't just have it in my brain, but I actually physically said it, and then the next morning, I wrote down everything I was going to need to research. I wrote down all the stuff I I was going to potentially need. I already, see, I already knew, though, that what I was going to start out with is not the stuff I needed, but anyways, so I wrote all down. And I wrote down a plan for how I was going to research and how I was going to understand techniques and equipment. And I put it on paper. Now, with putting it on paper, I created a SMART goal out of it. And I know I talked about this in the other episode specifically about SMART goals. But just to recap a little bit, a SMART goal is an acronym. And it stands for S being specific, M being measurable, A being achievable, R being relevant, and T being time-bound. And so that just kind of helps you with writing it down and having a deeper analysis of your goal. For me, at least, it just really helped to solidify the idea and make it physical and make it known and make it like almost a real thing in my brain. But also, if you do love it, never let anyone tell you that you don't love it. Now, granted... If it's a really, really stupid idea, then you might have to be able and accepting of changes that you might have, but still understanding the deep love or the deep passion that you have for that thing. Perfect example, again, this podcast. I had it super stuck in my brain, and I continue to tell myself, regardless of any doubt I had, This is going to be a good idea. This is going to be a great idea. I'm going to learn a lot from it. I'm going to be able to help a lot of people. It's going to be good. It's going to be worth it and all this other stuff. But with still telling people and putting it physically down on the paper, I was told some suggestions and I was, I contemplated a lot of stuff and I was able to almost refine it. And I never let anything block that initial love and that initial passion that I had and that I wanted to give into this project. So... And then lastly, this kind of picks into the other stuff that I said earlier, but don't let anything block it. Don't let some stupid excuse block it, whether that be the you don't have the equipment or you want to wait for the perfect time of year. Just don't let anything stupid block it. Now, obviously, some things do have to be put on hold and some things need to wait a little bit. But those are very, very few things. And I would say that they're in most extreme cases where you literally cannot do something because of something else. And I don't know everyone's life, so I'm not going to give examples. But with the deep analysis of writing on your goals and actually loving it, I think you'll be able to make a pretty good educated guess on when something needs to block something or when it doesn't. And... Like I said, I don't think New Year's resolutions are a bad idea. But I think that only limiting yourself to New Year's resolutions is complete humbug. And 
it doesn't allow a person to develop and to grow and be as happy as they possibly can because it's almost like you're just allowing yourself to be like a piece of new tech or like a car where you can only wait to the new year to become better or to become improved or to change who you are. And that's something that I apply in my life all the time. This podcast, I didn't start it during the new year. I started, I think, a couple weeks before we even went on winter break for school. But I didn't even tell myself for one second because I already knew that I I didn't want to do any type of New Year's resolution. I knew that whenever I get motivation to do something, I do the steps I previously talked about and I just do it. I started reading not too long ago, uh, reading self-development books and and just trying to become more literate and trying to get off my phone and, and not using social media as much of a blocker from day-to-day life, but more as like a tool for classes or for this podcast. And and those are all changes that I made for my life specifically that I thought would better my happiness and make me able to live a more fuller life in my case. And I didn't allow that to be controlled by the new year or by any type of time period. I just, I had the motivation and I did it. So next time you see some motivation or you feel a certain urge to do something, make it more than just a thought. Make some real effort into it and see what it can really do for your life or for your loved ones or for your opportunities in life. If you enjoyed this episode and it brought some value to your life, I would greatly appreciate it if you left a comment or a rating on iTunes or Spotify or Stitcher or Google Play or whatever platform you're on. And please follow us on Twitter at Lights underscore show.